AMD has done it and now can be viewed as premium brand for creativity as they have outperformed Intel in all areas. Previously, owning AMD was like having reloop turntables instead of Technics or something. And notably, AMD for the first time in many years have outperformed Intel in single core performance, which is very important for music production, as they are leveraging the TCMC's enhanced 7 nanometer lithography and all new architecture they are finally outperforming their high performance CPU competitors. But later we can discuss some areas where Intel can still beat AMD, but that's uh, for later. Initially, I thought that the new AMD 8 core, uh, that would be the Ryzen 7 5800X desktop CPU, would be great for music production, maybe even best for uh, most people because there is low latency between these cores in this eight core complex and if it would be the best cpu to run daw and uh, run daw in live performance mode but actually amd has made this choice a lot harder because the 12 core cpu has double the cache and that increases the single core performance for specific loads significantly. Also, they are putting together the best dies in the higher core count CPUs. So 12 core CPU gets higher boost clocks and also the 18 core CPU gets higher boost clocks. So AMD's 18 core CPU hits the highest single core results in benchmarks. But I have my doubts about this CPU for music production because the base clocks are significantly lower. But I guess it depends uh, on where exactly do you use this CPU. For mixing large projects and multitasking, 18 cores actually would be better to have. Also for 3D artists and anything related to graphics, there is no question that the 18-core CPU is great. And to my surprise, even for Photoshop users, because usually Adobe favors Intel. But you know, at the end of the day, both of these uh, CPUs are very similar in their x86 implementation. It was many years ago when actually AMD did use their cores in a completely different way when they had like a one and a half cores kind of a configuration but now both intel and amd are using this one fully fledged core and then two threads on top of it and going back to the theme of cache it is easy to get high yields for cache memory on tcmc's process nodes so AMD is really pushing more cache as a way to get higher single core performance on their chips. I guess the uniformity of cache and simpler connectivity of layers of the place in the die where the cache is, is the key why AMD is getting very low defect rate in their cache memory. One might wonder why didn't AMD unify these cores straight away in the last gen? It seems like it does not require a larger die and they are still using the same 7 nanometers that, uh, that they had the previous time. So why it was better to do this change now? Well, as much as I understand, the problem is with this infinity fabric communication part. Now it is down there at the bottom of the die and you need longer traces for it to communicate with the upper part of the die. But in Zen 2 architecture, it was in the middle of the die and the traces are then shorter for communication. And then it was less prone for defects. And as the process architecture gets more mature, the connections between parts get more complicated and AMD would not lose so much yield over that. So even though the size of the die remains the same, the complexity of these layers and communications that compose the CPU can get more complicated. So these chip companies always need to find this balance between different performances w which they could have yield and what in the future could be cheaper. That is why people are calling engineering uh, the art of compromises. 
But one other interesting thing in the next generation of AMD CPUs is their overclocking potential. Overclocking on previous generations wasn't such a good idea if you're producing music, for example, because you could get all cores to run faster than their base clock, but you would use the ability to boost to the highest possible clock speeds and therefore lose single core performance. But now the overclocking headroom is higher and some chips, especially Ryzen 5 chips, reportedly have been overclocked past their boost speeds on all cores. But that is a matter of silicon lottery, of course. And overclocking does void your warranty. So maybe it would be better to invest in better cooling and faster RAM and overclock that as it will yield a significant uh, performance uplift. I also have been tinkering with memory timings and frequency. So as long as you can make it work in one-to-one uh, -one ratio, I mean the infinity fabric and your memory speeds, the frequency, you can have large gains. Even if you would use the same sticks of RAM, but instead of two, you would use four sticks. Even there, there are some performance uplifts just because of how these buffering mechanism works and things like that. But if for some reason you suddenly will go above some threshold in frequency, you will actually go out of sync with Infinity Fabric and the performance of the CPU suddenly drops. So that's something to keep in mind. The easiest thing that I could imagine is just to uh, get these memory timings tighter, have uh, four sticks instead of two, and have decent cooling, and that already will uh, yield a jump in performance. So does Intel has anything that they are better at at this current point? Well, they have one thing going for them and that is high frequency. Not just that Intel chips can hit over 5 gigahertz, but they also overclock well. Now, discussion regarding frequency is a bit sensitive because a lot of people see that in real world, clock speed only matters relative to given IPC, that's instructions per clock. And that is true. But imagine if you are doing extremely simple calculations, but you need them to be processed fast with uh, low latency. And you have other cores that can clean up the background tasks. Then the CPU with higher frequency and lower latency would win. For example, if you would just ask to add together two short integers, all these large bandwidths and fancy pipelines and branch predictions would not help that much. That is why some Intel customers complained about CPUs with new architectures in that TikTok era because they just happened to run tasks where this new architecture actually performed worse. Uh, I could imagine that that uh, happens in real-time supercomputing scenarios or something like that. For example, um, Jim Keller in one of his interviews did mention that uh, with each new architecture there are these some customers that see the performance drop in their workloads. But majority of customers, they actually see a large increase in the performance. And Intel clock speeds might actually go down in the next generation of desktop CPUs uh, with code name Rocket Lake, which are using the Cypress Co cores and good old 14 nanometers in Q1 2021. They will go up to only eight cores and it is possible that they will outperform Ryzen 7 5800X or really come close to it in single core performance, but AMD will still have 5900X and 5950X with even better single core performance, leaving Intel as a somewhat of a budget option, I guess, if it's uh, of course priced accordingly. But if you have to buy a new motherboard and possibly a new power supply because of because 14 nanometer chips 
at this point at these high frequencies really consume a lot of power i guess it might not be so budget friendly after all but uh, it depends on how intel will price these chips and amd by that time will definitely lower their prices they have done that in the past and the price for seven nanometer chips actually will go down even more by that time and amd really wants to take a larger market share in uh, not just the gamers but also in professional space because for many many years people associate intel as the top product hopefully i will get uh, one of these new zen 3 uh, ryzen 5000 cpus on my hands as well to check uh, some of the previously ran um, benchmarks to see exactly how good it is in these um, audio use cases but for now that's it if you have one already i guess feel lucky and enjoy it